Welcome back shooters. Thank you for being here. If you've been here before, I appreciate you coming back. Hopefully everything that you're finding here is exactly what you need. If you have not been here before, make sure you go down, check the videos and look for anything that you might have been curious about, things you wanted to know, questions, whatever. Drop them in the comments as well and maybe we'll see if we can do a video on them. Um, <clears throat> also, if you're looking to support me and the channel, best way you can do that is by supporting yourself. Go down in the description and Pay attention to those links, that's all I'm going to say, so that uh, hopefully this doesn't get flagged again, like it always does. Now, to jump right into what we're going to be talking about is essentially, why should you compete and what can it do for you? Impact. Now this is kind of a really broad topic, right? It's a topic sentence essentially with a crap load of answers. So in order to get ideas and opinions and thoughts and experiences outside of my own head, I contacted some buddies who compete, whether it be as a hobby to professionally to whatever. Um, some a little less than I, more of them uh, compete a lot more than I do and in different uh, fields. So to get kind of a wide range of ideas and thoughts on why you should compete and the capabilities that it can give you. And what I got back was a lot a lot of more very similar answers, um, but different unique perspectives. So what I then did is I compiled them into a list and printed them off um, so I can read them with you. Now, it's a fat list, so I'm gonna try to move through it. Uh, but before I start on that, my reasons for competing were essentially, I started it because of mental health reasons. That was the, the first and foremost thing on my mind. I wanted to find something to do that got me out of the out of the house, so to speak, outside, got me around people, doing something that I love. It had me looking forward to something each month because I, yeah, I believe for a six month period, every month I was competing. So that was my primary reason. The second tertiary and all that was I had been wanting to compete since I was a kid. I had done a few competitions in the Marine Corps and afterwards, but never really seriously. Nothing where I was like, okay, I'm gonna compete in this series and do as best as I possibly can and see where I come out on the end. What I found was I was putting myself in situations that I, that were outside of my own mind, that were outside of my own purview. I didn't have any control over them. All I could do was step up to the plate and succeed or fail. And that was a big, uh, a big lesson. So, and you're gonna find a lot of that in this list. Now, one of the uh, first most simple ones that we can go over is enhances accuracy, speed, and handling. Um, so improves your firearms, fundamentals, and safe, weapons safety handling. And that's a big deal. What I always tell people in classes is, you can really tell how much someone knows by how they handle their firearm. So when you get with a squad and you start, uh, you start in a competition and you go your stage one for the day, and you're starting to look at the different people, who do you have to pay attention to through the day, who do, don't you have to pay attention to? That's the beginning of situational awareness. Uh, teaches what approaches are effective and risky. Distinguishes between practical and impractical shooting techniques. All right, so. If I come up, if you come up to a stage, speaking in the first person, but if you come up to a stage and you now have a problem to solve, 
what is there that I need to figure out? Now, is it going to be dialing? Is it going to be holding? Am I going to be doing a mix of the both? Am I going to go from this target to that target if it's not uh, predetermined? What position am I going to be in? Like, you got problems to solve if you are trying to compete. And one good thing you can do to figure that out is watch other shooters, which you'll find later. Um, you'll also figure out what, what what's not going to work for different things, which is a good good thing to do because you start picking, okay, I need to know this skill for that. I need to know this skill for that. And it causes you to realize that the fundamentals to go into that, if you haven't seen the video I've done on that, go check it out. But the fundamentals are essential skills and knowledge that you need to know. They're not necessarily essential, essential skills and knowledge to every shot, but they're, they are for you to know. Um, emphasizes the importance of positions, holds, and dialing in your rifle. Focuses on critical aspects of shooting mechanics. Shooting mechanics is everything. Focusing on positions is everything. No matter what you are doing with firearms as shooting, you're in a position. This is, I mean, bring it back to the fundamentals again. This is why I teach the first fundamental as position and not stance. Stance is a standing position. So in order to give shooters the best knowledge I possibly can and break down the principles, it's as a position. So now you're looking for those simple principles in every position that you're in. Introduces real stakes with penalties for mistakes, encouraging improvement, and adds consequences to promote learning from errors. So whether you're going for the prize table or whether you're going just to compete against yourself and see if you're better than the last comp you did or to see where you measure up against those around you, there's consequences in that. There, whether those consequences are being levied upon yourself, as in, I want to do good, I didn't do good, I feel shame. Um, those are consequences that can drive you forward to better success if you allow them to do it healthily. And if you're trying to compete, if you're trying to get better, stuff like that, having those kinds of consequences, it's good to have. If you don't have any consequence and you brush it off, no big deal, not a good thing. Helps identify reliable equipment and what might not be worth in, vet, in, an, uh, in an investment, excuse me, aids in discerning essential gear from non-essential. So I actually think about this all the time. I pack out so much crap when I go to teach, it's often in my head, like what do I actually need just to make my shots? What is the most minimum piece of gear that I need to make my shots, right? And a majority of that is as long as I know as much as I need to, I can eliminate a lot of my gear. And that's incredibly helpful to know. However, a lot of pieces of gear can help, like Kestrels. Kestrels are extremely helpful, and I'm considering doing some video series on those things because of how awesome they are. Now, oh, it can also, going out to competitions, seeing other shooters, seeing other pieces of gear, trying them out, just getting on a gun, ask a shooter, hey, can I press a few shots, stuff like that. That is the kind of environment that you want to foster, that you want to be in, that you want to be a part of. You want to be a good ambassador to new shooters coming in. So don't, if you're a, a veteran in the community, as far as like a veteran in uh, competition and everything, be a good host. Allow them into your house and teach them, okay? Don't brush people off. I've seen that far too many times and it, it's aggravating when you want the sports to grow. Competing gives a goal to strive for, benefiting overall mental health and focus, sets objectives that contribute to mental well-being. So I kind of talked about this already. An overall goal, say I have a competition at the end of the month, I need, and I put a goal, I want to have three training sessions in before I go to that comp. They could be dry fire, they could be live fire, they could be just simple sit down for 15 to 20 minutes and go through a mental visual, visualization of my pre-stage process, my priorities of work, and say I pull up a uh, an old matchbook and I go through that stage in my head something like that right those are different things that you can do different capabilities that you can have in order to prepare for that next goal or for that next comp and getting outside uh, messing with your gear adjusting your firearm stuff like that is teaching you more it's getting you uh, exposed to things like vitamin D right those simple things can help out with mental health so much and they are the mental health aspect of shooting competitions is much bigger than I originally anticipated and it is much more widespread but not very much talked about. Well, 
I run in my mouth about it all the time because I really want it to get out there. Now, offers a tangible measure of skill against peers, debunking or confirming perceived abilities, provides a benchmark for personal skill levels. This was a common thing that uh, I got back from feedback from a lot of uh, shooters that I had messaged to give me you know, other thoughts and ideas and experience on this. And I couldn't agree more. The, the capability of having something tangible to measure up against, like this time, where is it in like say 50 shooters, where is it stacking up? So say you're middle of the pack, okay, you can assume you're average. Do you wanna be above average? Start moving yourself up, start training to get better at that, different things like that. Having that tangible measure is really helpful. The success is what you're gonna define it as. So don't let yourself get beat up too hard. And if you go to a comp, it say it's your first one, and you get absolutely wrecked, which happens at times, don't let it discourage you. Look at it like this. Okay, I, I was very last out of 70 shooters. Look at all the lessons, look at all the things that I can do better and start attacking those because those are different things that I can, those are as many steps as I have to get better and more knowledge that I can gain. And it is extremely exciting to be in that place, in my opinion. Uh, it can suck. I've talked to shooters before. I've been in a position before where I feel like I'm plateaued and I don't know where to go. And I'm in my own pond too much or for too long. And that is incredibly frustrating. So in, in one point of view, it's almost more satisfying to be low in the pack to see everything that you have to uh, look forward to learning and skills gaining and to and see what you can achieve from that. So don't be discouraged by it. The drive to win can increase dedication to training and preparation, motivates more rigorous and focused uh, practice. So take it like this. Say you have, I don't know, 10 stages and say there were two that just really just screwed you up. Look at those two, figure out what screwed you up, go out and train those things. Now you have goals to train for. You have specific skills to train for. And I mean, this isn't exactly, I, I should, I'll talk about this probably more at the end, but those who say that competition has no real life meaning, flat out wrong. Just the bare simple thing of it is, because I have competed so much with say one of my rifles, I know I can take that rifle in any given situation that's real life and apply it and be effective quickly and accurately simply because I have so much more time on that gun. I think last year or last season, so to speak, I had, I ordered 2,500 rounds for the whole comp season for that, my competition rifle. And I went through that ammo, whether it be in training or in comp, that's 2,500 more rounds than someone who isn't competing saying that their duty gun, they absolutely know, and they're not shooting that much. That's just the bare way to look at it. Now, makes you a more formidable opponent, I just talked about this, more formidable opponent to potential threats by honing your skills, enhances personal defense capabilities. I completely agree with this simply because it's the truth. I mean, there's no real way to argue with it. In case you're wondering, I'm marking so I know where I am. Uh, if you know where you stack up, not just in your local area, but say you travel for a match, you have, an, you have a very solid idea on how good you are. Now you have an idea where you can stack up against some uh, high threat situation against criminals. And this doesn't, and it doesn't matter what kind of competition it is. Obviously I shoot a lot more uh, like DMR style matches. However, I do plan on doing more pistol and uh, carbine ones here soon. So let's take away the reason I just explained of simply, I have more time on that gun. I now have multiple different experiences with that firearm engaging known or unknown targets and increasing distances, difficulty in different weather conditions and different wind types and uh, in transitioning from target to target multiple different times and simply say I go from a, a 100 yard, 235 yard to a 650 yard target quickly, that's not something that the average shooter is doing all the time. And that's something that they should be doing all the time. I have those skills to fall back on. I have those experiences to fall back on versus someone who doesn't, versus someone who says competition breeds bad habits, so I'm just not gonna do it, and then they're not training anyways. That's, that's dumb, guys, come on. And 
the argument of oh, train how you fight. Well, yeah, you should train how you fight. However, if you can't delineate mentally the difference in driving back road country on a, a uh, dirt road versus driving on a freeway, then there's a problem with that because it's the same concept. You're applying a different form of shooting here than you would here. That's all it really is. Um, there are some conversations out there. People say there are no such things as comp guns. They're all duty guns because you set them up that way. I kind of differ from that, but I see the point is you want to set up your firearm as efficiently as possible to achieve the goal of hitting targets, uh, whether at distance or close range, fast and accurate. And that's the goal of both. So that's important to pay attention to. Reveals how you handle stress and make decisions under pressure. Test and improve stress management and decision making skills. 1000%. If you have never been in a high stress situation, such as like a life or death or trauma or something, and you have no idea how you're going to act, which some people don't. I get messages from people like, hey, I have no clue what do my hands do, how, what. Uh, Put yourself under time, put yourself under physical stress, whether that's physical exercise under time or just measured up against someone. I guarantee you when you hear that beep go off and you got people watching you and it's your first time and in yourself, you've built it up and you really want to do well, you're going to get an adrenaline rush. I, two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, teaching a class, come up on a culminating event for, on day four and we have all shooters, including instructors, run through the same stages I got an adrenaline rush because I'm in my mind, I'm okay, I'm competing. I'm going as hard as I can to get this done. And I come off smiling, alive, feeling that adrenaline pump, and I'm wide awake and engaged. And it absolutely happens. If you pay attention to a buddy of mine who's one of the guys I messaged for his thoughts, uh, John Porter, he's got articles on the website. I'll make sure to put up here. Uh, he's also one of the instructors that I use at times. He's 20 years out of the army, majority of that, like 16 years SF. And when he first competed, and this is what his article's about, is he got his shit pushed in and he thought he wouldn't. And the rush that you get off of uh, being on time against people and against yourself is real. So make sure you are doing that. Offers an opportunity to apply skills in a controlled competitive environment, provides a safe space for skill application and improvement. So essentially, yeah, offers the opportunity to apply skills. It's a competition, you're going in, okay, I'm coming in with everything I've got, my gun, my gear, my skills, what I can do, and I'm gonna see how I do on this stage that someone else made up and I don't know what it is. So that's being put to the test, right? And it's being done so in a safe environment, not I'm gonna go out into the woods and shoot frying pans and dishwashers with my buddies and blow rounds and drink beer. like. That is all too common in the United States. Also, you should never be mixing alcohol and firearms, which I see a lot, unfortunately. Uh, I even went, someone went so far as saying, you know, it's just a good time to go and sit on a tailgate and shoot guns with your buddy and get drunk. Like, no, no, it's not. Uh, that's pretty stupid, actually. And that's what causes problems for the rest of us. Now, Provides intense learning experiences, more so than passive study methods, accelerates learning through active participation. It's a different type of learning. If you are a social learner, going to a class is a good thing because you're around people, you're in that environment. Going to a competition is a good thing because you're around others and you're learning, you're watching, you're seeing, you're doing, you're talking back and forth. Hey, what'd you do here? What was your wind here? or what was your win call here, different things like that. It is a social environment to engage in that allows you to learn quickly if that is the type of learner you are. If you are not that kind of learner, you can find it a, a bit overwhelming. So go there, have a plan, write notes, keep a piece of paper and do what you need to do. Make that experience work for you. Allows you to watch top tier shooters and learn from their techniques. Offers a chance to observe and emulate expert practices. So. This is one thing that I find incredibly valuable. So the, when I did my first two quantified performance matches and then the third, and then I got, I was getting ready for my fourth and I was like, okay, the first two were, it was a back to back match. And I was as green as could be made a lot of mistakes. Heck you can go check it out on the channel. Um, but what I then realized is when I was watching the people in my stages, 
or in my squads with me is like, okay, there's some guys that are really good. There's some that are mid, there's some that are new. That's great. What do I want to do for me? I want to be as best as possible. So what can I do? Okay, I can find the guys that are on the leaderboards from the last or previous matches. I can look into their history on practice score and I can see when they squad up and join that squad so that I can watch those guys. So choose who you squad with. Yeah, go squad with your buddies. Honestly, I find that to be a little more important in some circumstances simply because the camaraderie and the joy that you get from that is something that is, I, want, I don't want to say unmatched, but it's hard to find in other places. However, if you're there to compete, squad with the guys that are, um, that are coming out on the top of the ranks. The competitive, competitive atmosphere encourages you to constantly enhance your abilities, fosters an improvement of continuous skill development. Absolutely. But that's only if you take it seriously, right? Meet and connect with individuals who share your passion and interest, builds a community and camaraderie among like-minded individuals. I remember getting asked once in a comment, like, it's hard to find people that want to do the same things I do. No, it's not. Go to where those people are going to be, whether all you got is a local gun store or go to the range or go to a competition, even if you have to travel, go to the places where they're going to be and lifelong friends. You can make lifelong friends and say you're competing six matches a year. That's every two months. You're getting together for a weekend with your buddies out sending some rounds down range and having a good time and Good banter, camaraderie, picking on each other, stuff like that. It's a good time. Um, let's see, the last one we got here. Competing can spark interest in related fields like ballistics, further expanding your expertise, encourages exploration of broader shooting disciplines and knowledge areas. So what it's also made me better at is the mental side of things. So I started paying attention and reading more about visualization, shooting with high heart rates, and working those skills and how they can better me. So then it helped me make my process pre-stage more efficient so that I can be a more effective shooter. So now when I step up to a stage, I check my priorities of work, my gun, optic, ammo, bag, everything's good to go, I'm set. Shooter stand by, first thing I do. Beep goes off as I step into my stage. And I just step in with like serious flow and zen because I just got all the air my body needed, my mind needed, and I'm calm and cool and collected for it. And then through there, it was the problem solving. It's a lot of this is mental. It's a lot more mental than physical, to be honest. Um, well, with this, the competitions that I do at least, there's obviously the physical aspects and other competitions like uh, tactical games, Patriot games, the proving grounds, things like that. Those are all very physically demanding um, shooting competitions. Another thing is it gets you off a of flat range. It gets you shooting things and in environments that you have no control over. You can pick the venue, sure, if your competition is where you want it to be. However, kind of a broad type of video, a uh, little, a lot of answers, a lot of specifics there. And just to go back to what I said earlier is those who say that competition has no place in real world shooting is completely wrong. Like, I can't say it enough. It highlights your errors. It highlights your deficiencies and shows you exactly where you need to get better. It is the skill, the skill of shooting and how it is applied, that how it's applied may be different, but you still need to have the skill of shooting. It has made me a faster, more efficient shooter has made me more mentally prepared. It has made me be more confident in my decisions as far as um, what my dope is, what my dialing is, my wind calls, things like that. It has made me be more uh, considerate as well as far as my skill versus the target respect and what it demands. Shout out to Scott Peterson. Um, I can speak about it a lot quicker too because I have a deeper understanding of it than I did when I started. So in essence, what I wanted out of it in that aspect as far as measuring myself up against myself and others and seeing where I lie and then validation for not just my students but the things I'm teaching as well, I got it and I'm still getting it. and it's something I'm going to continue to do because not just knowing that is important but seeing how it's made me such a better shooter in just a year, uh, a year six matches oh yeah absolutely and uh, that's all I got on this topic for now this is one that can be it can be expanded on 
exponentially. However, I just wanted to get some notes out there on why competition, why you should do it. And this, in my opinion, applies to any comp. So make sure you go out there and do it. If you have questions on it, drop them below. We'll check them out. And go check out Quantify Performance. It's the series I'm shooting. I'm going to be at them this year as well. Any questions, any concerns, comments, additions? If you got anything to add, what are your experiences? If you've competed, drop them down below. If it's been stuff like YouTube or people you pay attention to like that that have gotten you into it, let us know who so we can check them out. I know like it, inspiration can come from anywhere and I absolutely encourage you as shooters to go out and find it. So that's all I got for you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, get out and bang. You are still here little tip something that i've come to realize in myself and speaking with others and having conversations with them about it it's kind of coming to be around generally true um, if you find yourself having conversations within yourself and like with someone else say like you're mentally working through a conversation with your spouse or your buddy or a co-worker and it's over problems, it's over issues, it's something and you find yourself getting really irritated. To me, that's what I've come to realize is highlighting two things is, one, there's absolutely a problem there. There's something emotionally connected and rooted within you that needs to be addressed. That's not being addressed. And you need to recognize that. And two, that there is a lack of communication going on between you and that person that needs to be fulfilled you need to communicate with them regardless of what type of communication that may be you need to do it another one is a majority of the time when that's happening is since it's going on within you those conversations are so emotionally fueled and what's actually happening is you're just having them with yourself that conversation you're having with them so to speak that's not them that's yourself. That is the good side of you and the bad side of you just trying to work this shit out. Separate yourself from that. Recognize, hey, I'm having, I'm actually really irritated by this. I'm having a big emotion about this. Why is that? Figure out why that is. So set that aside, figure that problem out, investigate into that. And then recognize that, okay, depending on the relationship of that person in your life, that they may want you to bring that problem to them if they, and if they have a bad reaction, that's on them, it's not on you. If you say, I'm not bringing this to you because I'm protecting your feelings, it's not true. You're actually protecting your own because you don't want to feel hurt by hurting them or upsetting them. That's not protecting them. The ultimate form of love and respect is accountability. Hold those you love accountable and show them that respect by holding them accountable. And if they recognize that, regardless of how hard it may be to hear, hopefully they'll learn that you love and respect them too, okay? Because you want people in your life to be as best as they possibly can and you want yourself to be as best as they possibly can while remembering to give people grace because we all fail. That's all I got for now. See you next week. Get out and bang.